And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Dinogenics. This is essentially Jurassic Park, the board game. They can't call it that, but I can. Uh, in this game, you are have a park where you have dinosaurs, and you're trying to create enclosures and get really cool dinosaurs for people to come and see. Carnivores give you more trouble, and you also have this bad habit of maybe making uh, mutant dinosaurs along the way. This is a what we call a worker placement style game, where you'll be placing workers and taking actions, trying to get enough DNA to make the dinosaurs you want, to uh, just get more and more dinosaurs in your pens and get the most points. You want the people coming to your park without that scandal and that eating and screaming and stuff like that. Here's how it plays. The game is going to take place over a certain number of seasons, which are kept with this tracker up here. There's also a preseason, which is essentially the same as the rest of the turns. It's just that you kind of get like a starting turn where you're placing out workers on the board. Uh, that's basically what this game is. It's a, what we call a worker placement game, where in each round of the game, players will have to deal with maybe some breaking news that will show you what's coming next. Uh, turn something specific like here workers can't be played to site a this season that's going to happen next turn this turn if you play a worker to dinogenics you get a uh, scandal token which are worth negative points at the end of the game so there's various things that can happen that you have to do with but players are going to take turns placing these workers that they have and you'll have a certain number depending on the number of players on the board and doing actions some of the places you can place them will give you resources like if you go up here you just get goats. Goats are a resource that you will use to feed the carnivores that you have as the game progresses. If you go to the ferry, you just get money. There's, you're going to be using money to buy dinosaur genes and things like that. You can go to site A to draw two of these uh, dino gene cards. You can go to Boneyard, take a scandal token to take any one of these cards from the discard pile in your hand. You can go uh, to the time agency to get rid of scandal tokens and to draw these special, very powerful cards that can only be played if you go to the uplink where you can play one of those. Timeshare gives you money and a visitor to your park. Outsource lets you go to a spot somebody else went on. And in the city center, you can do a variety of things by fences, by buildings that will go into your area, and you can buy or sell the DNA cards. All this comes about to use the dinogenics area up here where you're going to get basically play a certain number of cards from your hand and you can always play uh, three cards as one but so for example if I want to play a brontosaurus in my park I'm gonna to need to play four brontosaurus cards and this there's a lot of different information if they need meat that we'll mention here so the raptors each raptor is gonna need me to feed them a goat each turn and this tells me how much I can buy or sell the card for. It gives me a special ability like the Brontosaurus doesn't need to be in a pen. While the Raptor needs to be in a pen at least the size of one. These will bring you a certain amount of reputation to your park and a certain amount of victory points that they'll provide you each turn of the game. And so there are eight different dinosaurs in the game and so players are going to be trying to put those in their park. Each player has their own park with a starting builder, building that can hold two visitors and players are trying to have the highest reputation because more visitors will come to their park each turn and as time goes by you're probably going to want to build more spots in your park that will allow you to have more visitors. Uh, you can also buy special buildings that will give you extra points at the end of the game. Some of these buildings go here and some of them go outside in the area out there. Players will also have a chance to build fences and they can every time they build fences they can rearrange your existing fences to build various pens and in these pens they're going to put the various different dinosaurs. For example, here's a T-Rex dinosaur. Each of the dinosaurs in the game has different miniatures like the Brontosaurus doesn't even need to be in a pen and there's even these crazy mutant dinosaurs that can be put into different pens. Goats don't need to be kept in pens, you just keep them aside and use them to pay off your dinosaurs. At the end of every round, you're going to check to see if a dinosaur can be fed. If you, you're going to be rolling these, sometimes you'll have to roll these rampage dice depending on if you have a dinosaur that's not in a pen, that's in the wrong pen, that's in a pen with another dinosaur that's just not being fed. You'll roll these dice where they will unfortunately eat people and damage some of your buildings, just damage your buildings, 
or do no damage at all. In fact, the people think it's so cool they give you money, but that's only on one of the six sides of a die. That's basically it. There's this other board up here, which keeps track of each of the player's reputation. And each turn shows how many bonus visitors and how many visitors will go to the person with the highest reputation, which is going to increase as time goes by. And then how all the different cards work is also kind of a part of the game. You know, which dinosaurs are you going to put in here? And at the end of the game, you're going to take the points you've scored over the course of the game, add them to end game uh, bonuses for buildings, and whoever has the most points is the winner. The game comes with an insert where you can put all the different dinosaurs in it. There's also room for the cards. I just spread out the dinosaurs so you can see. It is neat to see all the different types of dinosaurs and goats and everything. The fences especially are really cool. I really like how the board itself is recessed so that you can place the fences into the different spots or as you're putting these buildings in, they fit right into those spots. The only complaint I might have is that the spots for the visitors are cubes and the visitors are little dudes. I wonder if the visitors were originally cubes. The dice are fine. The workers of the different colors look good. Uh, the money is nice tokens. Doesn't really look like money, but whatever. And the board itself, I really like the artwork on the board. I like the artwork on the cards. Definitely has that Jurassic Park feel to it. The card quality is good. Uh, for the most part, I'm very impressed with the components of this game. I should mention the one thing that I did find a little bit annoying was all the buildings, the symbology on them, I didn't find that to be super clear, so constantly looking them up. Your board itself tells you what each dinosaur does, so that's helpful. I don't have to keep remembering, oh yeah, the brontosaurus is the one that's outside, the ankylosaurus is the one that can be in a pen with another dinosaur, blah, 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 the T-Rex rolls two dice on a rampage. So all that stuff is, is, is fine, it's just that the buildings, you're constantly looking them up and saying this building does that. Uh, that's my only complaint, I suppose, about components. The gameplay is very smooth and very simple. And in fact, I think a lot of people uh, who are looking for a heavier game might be surprised and or disappointed that it's not more involved. It's pretty much very straightforward. Get cards that you need, get sets of those cards, play those cards, get dinosaurs, and the differentiation is going to be what buildings am I building, what groups of dinosaurs do I have. You can go for the mutant ones, and the mutant ones have a habit of kind of causing more and more problems and spreading. Uh, or you can try to get the big ones that are harder to get because of more cards, but give you that more reputation. At the end of the game, you get bonus for the number of different dinosaurs in your park, so you might go for that. And trying to avoid scandal along the way. Now, I like the game a lot, and I enjoy it, and will gladly play it again. But there is one thing that you should know about this game is that on the cover here you see the T-Rex and it looks like it's rampaging and you know you expect that to happen and there's mutant dinosaurs and there's scandal. And in fact, it's pretty easy to avoid these things. There are some events that can make it so that your dinosaurs rampage, but for the most part, even if you have T-Rexes and stuff, it's not hard to get the goats that you need to feed them. It's not hard to keep them in the same pen. Why would you put them in different pens? And it's only usually an event that will cause that or just bad planning on your part. So that's fine. I mean, it's not that I want the dinosaurs to run rampant through my park, but the threat isn't nearly as bad as it could be. And even the scandal tokens aren't that hard to get rid of. Another small negative against the game is that the event cards are extremely powerful. Now, that's not problematic. I mean, you just play event cards and use them, but not the, not, the, not the breaking news cards, but those cards you can get, I'm sorry, that you can play on other people or yourself. They're really powerful and really cool. And ignore them at your own peril. I almost think they're almost a little too powerful. Other than that, the game plays really smoothly. It almost reminds me of Agricola, the family version, the dino game, because you're collecting all the different dinosaurs, putting them in your park and stuff. I don't mind that. It's a lot of fun. Now, I will say, it's going to be the number one asked question in, on this review if I don't mention it. How does this compare to uh, Dinosaur Island? I think they're very different games. They have the exact same theme. I think they're compared. Uh, I'll probably do another video at some point comparing them in more in full. But right now, I lean maybe a little bit towards Dinosaur Island, but that's a heavier, more bigger experience. If I'm playing with families and such, this would always be the first one I would pick. It's easier to teach and faster to play. Uh, but they're both excellent games. 
Component quality is really neat. When you look at this game, you're like, ooh, dinosaurs, yeah. And it's easy to get people in because you just say, hey, you want to play Jurassic Park, the game. Uh, small little problems that I mentioned a few things. I don't think they really detract overall from the game, and it's a lot of fun. And you'll find that different people will have different, you know, groupies at the end. I got a bunch of T-Rexes, and I got Brontosaurus, and I have one of every dinosaur. And the play is simple enough that you're able to jump into it again. Each game is going to be slightly different depending on the breaking news that happens. Yeah, I think it fits the theme very well. A lot of fun. Maybe not enough dead visitors for some people's likings. But overall, I think most people are going to enjoy Dinogenics. Dice Tower Judgment approved!